Joining us now to take a closer look at the art of parallel symmetry, we're joined by Michael Hollett, editor and publisher of Now Magazine, and David Langell, one of the parallel summit organizers. Good morning to you both. David, just what exactly is the purpose of this parallel summit? Well, there are several different events taking place within the overall context of the popular summit. I was co-chairing the Summit Citizens Conference, which was offering a public forum whereby concerned individuals could discuss the issues that are in front of the group of seven leaders and also raise issues that we feel that they're ignoring. And um, there was also a war crimes tribunal, as you're aware, which was putting the group of seven leaders on trial. Uh, there was a rally, which you've just seen the clip. Um, there was a theatrical element to all of this. I mean, was part of it to really draw international attention away from the economic summit itself and just try and get the public to pay attention to you? I mean, was your message to the leaders or to the public? Well, I think ultimately we're going to have the most impact on public opinion. The group of seven leaders haven't been listening. Uh, Ronald Reagan, when he was recently at the summit in Moscow, went out and talked to the people, uh, some of the dissidents. Here he hasn't come to our conference, and I don't think he was at the rally just kind of a little disappointing. So it's to educate public opinion about the important issues that we're facing. Michael, do you think that the education process worked? I mean, was the turnout sufficient, the attention given it sufficient, that you would call the Parallel Summit a success? It's a success just by virtue of the fact it's taking place. I think uh, at a moment like this, silence speaks louder than, <clears throat> speaks loudly too. And I think it's imperative that, that I respect people like David, who participated in organizing this event and making sure that something subst substantive was being raised at a moment like this. I mean, frankly, uh, the leaders certainly, with their briefings here, have been doing their best to to uh, not really raise that many issues. And, and I think what we have here is basically the biggest publicity opportunity this country has ever seen. And I think what we're finding is people want to see the spotlight cast a little broader, and they want to see that that uh, there are other people who speak for this country besides leaders. Would it be fair to say that if you acknowledge that you think the economic summit is a publicity grab, aren't you indulging in the same tactics? Aren't you as guilty of a publicity grab by staging the summit, uh, the parallel summit and the demonstrations? You're a culprit. We're guilty of that. <laughs> <You> <laughs> That's are... no crime, though, because the group of yeah. seven leaders, uh, they do run democracies and they do believe in consultation with the public and listening to the public. And there haven't been many opportunities, really, provided for us to get our point of view expressed. Your concerns are so diverse. There are so many many different groups that have been involved in the summit. Has that been a problem? I mean, logistically, was it really difficult to get some sort of coordinated guide as to how you were going to proceed with this summit? Well, there's not a need for unity any more than there is a need to have unity amongst the different churches in Canada, the Anglican, the Roman Catholic, United. Uh, in this case, we were just using different tactics to appeal to different constituencies to make our points in different ways. Michael, were you at all surprised by the way in which security forces handled the whole thing? I wasn't surprised, but I was disappointed. I mean, in general, the city has been subject to a, a mass sterilization. They have been cleaning walls. They have been, I mean, they have been keeping people away from this area. And, and I think it's interesting, this event, certainly the city of Toronto is using this as a moment to, to celebrate the city, to showcase the city. Well, I would like to think that in this country, one of the things we celebrate is the fact people can have demonstrations, they can express themselves, they can raise issues. I think a lot of journalists would leave the city feeling a lot more impressed with the nature of the society by seeing 10, 20,000 people who would have come to a demonstration where they didn't, the prospect of arrest did not face them. That would be more impressive to, impressive to the media than the CN Tower. David, how about you? How did you respond to the way in which authorities dealt with the groups, particularly when some of the people tried to break through barriers to do their so-called citizens arrest on the leaders? Well, of course, the conference participants weren't on this. Well, some of us were at the rally, but we didn't get arrested. Um, it's unfortunate that you have to get arrested in order to get the same sort of coverage from the media, that, that the media focuses on the conflict, because what we wanted to concentrate on was the issues and, and raise the issues that are being ignored by the group of seven leaders, propose alternative policies, alternative points of view, and discuss the political strategies necessary to achieve those policies. I was upset that uh, there were so many police, because it's not something that we're used to in Canada, this level of authoritarian statism that you see in Europe more often. And, and, and it'll be an unwelcome intrusion in Canada to... Very to quickly, are you planning thing, anything more in the next 24 hours? Yes. Uh, evening forum tonight with people like Gwyn Dyer and Admiral Carroll talking about military policies. Uh, and tomorrow evening, a public forum talking about how we can find political solutions to all of these economic problems. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Thank you. Here's Norm. 16 past the hour. More than five.